Elise Gordon, and I'm proud to be board president of Sea Glass Theater Company. Today, I'm happy to launch our Spotlight series at Sea Glass. Over the next several months, we will be highlighting colleagues, collaborators, and featured artists with Sea Glass Theater Company. We're very excited to bring you this series, and it will be available on our website and YouTube channel. So let's kick it off with countertenor Dr. Wee Kya Cha. Dr. Chia, welcome to our inaugural spotlight with Sea Glass Theater Company. Wee Kya, you are one of our favorite collaborators, and we're so thrilled to have you here today to talk to us about your background and, and your musicality and how that all happened. So why don't we start with where you grew up and how you first experienced music? Sounds good. Uh, I grew up in Malaysia in a family, obviously, that loved music. Uh, I started singing since I was in kindergarten, and I participated in singing competitions throughout my years in primary school. But it was not until when I uh, started singing in my high school choir that I was given proper music training and education. Wonderful. And was that what inspired you to focus on your instrument and your singing? Was that in high school or did it t tell us a little bit about that part of your inspiration? Yeah, I definitely learned a lot in high school choir. And uh, after graduating high school and, uh, and having taught about countertenor in my high school choir, we were listening music to uh, like music ensembles like King Singers. There, that, that, that is where I got to uh, learn about countertenor singing, you know. And my sister, Ian, who had seen my potential in music and singing throughout, my potential in music and singing throughout my life, uh, she encouraged me to apply for music school, actually. Not only that, uh, as a classical singer herself, who had studied music in Vienna for, for about six years, she specifically advised me to audition as a countertenor. And in, I think, 26, uh, 2006, yeah, 20. 206, I started my professional training in Singapore as the school's uh, first ever counter tenor. Wonderful. In his about your specific to you that nobody else will be able to talk about because you have an amazing broad international experience for our for our collaborators at Sea Glass and please share a few of those with us because they there must be very unique stories within some of those 
Yeah.、Mm. Maybe I should just share my musical journey as I was, you know, exploring my my talent and my music、uh, musical ability and and all that. Yeah, I I actually wanted to go to the European country straight away, but I didn't.、Uh, but I.、Um, But looking back, I am happy that I started my journey in Singapore, my neighboring country.、Uh, I met some of my best friends while I was there, and one of the reasons why that we are still very close friends, I guess, is because uh, we uh, the learning culture there was very friendly and open-minded, especially for beginners and young singers. So、uh, among the students, we would openly discuss with each other about our performances. Whether it be critically or, but definitely respectfully, and that's how I was built as a as a career、uh, singer. That kind of built my professional personality, so to speak. And after Singapore, I moved to no. Before I moved to Hong Kong, I actually applied to Royal College of Music in London.、Yeah. I was so happy that I was accepted, but. It was very、uh, expensive, and、uh, it, it was a lot of money that I didn't have, and I ended up declining that offer. So I was totally lost. I didn't know what to do. But、uh, have, after having a chat with my teacher, she advised me to audition for Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts, and that was how I began my new journey in Hong Kong with full scholarship and accommodation on on the. Financial financial perspective, it was a great a great opportunity to help me to you know to push me into another state of my musical life.、Mm. And、um, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. On the surface, I I didn't seem to be a big different moving from、uh, Singapore to Hong Kong because it's from one Asian country to another. But、uh, To my surprise, it was a little bit of a culture shock because it was definitely more competitive in Hong Kong. However, I enjoyed my school tremendously.、Um, and as you know, there are many、uh, big businesses in Hong Kong, and many of them would collaborate with our school as sponsors.、Uh, through an in-house private scholarship, I managed to go to Europe two times、uh, during my years there. And participate、uh, in summer programs in Austria, and that was my first educational trip to Europe because of my school in Hong Kong. And as I said just now,、uh, I went back home to Malaysia after graduating school in Hong Kong and started working in Singapore and Malaysia. After about three years, I have decided to further my studies, and the United States was. Next on my list of、uh, dream destinations, it took me a while to think about that option because you know I was twenty something, late twenty something, and starting starting another chapter was was not too difficult for a twenty something year old guy. But it was still like a new country, not the native language. They're not speaking the native your native language, so it was a huge decision to make. But I. Stuck to my guts, and then I came here, and then I was so happy that I made this decision because I get to come here and meet so many new musicians, make so many new friends, and you know, creating a new life here in this country. Yeah. <laughs> What a journey! That's wonderful. I'm I'm de- definitely thankful to be somehow given this this musical life that brings me everywhere. Downtime. Oh, downtime! We definitely have a lot of downtime recently, I guess. And、um, I love art and craft. I do a lot of DIY stuff, and I made wreaths 
for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, and some of my home decoration. You can you can see like one of those things, some of those things. Yeah, that's how I, you know, try to keep my life a little bit more in interesting, especially during the pandemic. And um, talking about pandemic, right? Uh, I have found a new passion, I would say, that uh, I like to make music videos with friends and family. Uh, not only that it's fun to make them, it's it definitely has is helping me to you know try to survive this pandemic a little bit better because it's still music making although it's different you don't get to collaborate with people in live occasions but uh, keeping the music making uh, going definitely helps to 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 make this a little bit more you know tor what's the word tolerable tolerable yeah tolerable yeah. <laughs> A side hustle what do you what do you have something that you do or that's outside the world of music or what what is that I was and still am a choir conductor I teach music I perform and uh, as I teach as a uh, vocal teacher and also uh, a vocal coach and I'm a choir singer so all the jobs that I am doing and have done are all music related I have to say because I just love music. That's beautiful. I, I, I love that. I love that. Now, speaking of, since it's your total passion, tell us about one of your most memorable performances. 
Mm, I love all my gigs and, you know, opportunities to work with people. But if I can only choose one, I would have to say that, uh, that um, uh, being able to workshop the, the collaboration of Beth Morrison projects and White Snake projects uh, in their Ouroboros trilogy, uh, it was one was one of my most memorable performances because uh, not only it was a new work and it was very interesting to be a part of it, it also helped me to be, a, uh, be hired by them and being a part in the professional premiere of the trilogy in Boston. And I was covering the roles of Xiao Qing, uh, a green snake demon in all three offers. Yeah. Wow. Love it. Love it. on your on your dream list do you have another location or is it the u.s somewhere else or oh wow i i mean for music educational purpose i think this is my last stop i've gotten my doctorate degree i definitely want to learn more a, 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 a beyond a doctorate degree you know life is a if is a lesson itself so I want to still travel when it's safe, you know, to more European countries, to more cities uh, in the United States, just to not just to be a tourist and enjoy the city, but to work with people in different musical life and level, just to just to learn from them that I something that I can't learn in in school in in books, you know, through their life I want to learn their music. Well, that'll be our gift from you. If you stay within the United States, we'll be able to see lots and lots of you very, more easily. That'll be wonderful. I now, love I, to be here. Yeah, I have to ask you about the countertenor. It's considered to be such a niche voice type. Would you please share some of the more interesting reactions you've had and some of the, just some of the things that surround that amazing and unusual voice. Yeah, it is unusual. And the, <laughs> uh, the beginning of the journey was so unusual as well, because usually you would think that it was someone else that reacts negatively or curiously about this voice type. It was actually me, myself, that reacts some, some sort of negatively, because, uh, um, because as, as a young singer, it was just not easy in the beginning to not think about how others might think of you, you know, especially when you just started singing and, and you, you are very self-conscious, you don't know much about your own voice type or even your life. So you're learning everything. So, so when I was still learning about this voice type, I, 
I was so nervous. And whenever I still remember whenever I was in school, I felt whenever I felt someone was like walking past the practice room or in, in the corridor, my voice would just close up and I didn't just I didn't just I didn't dare to sing out loud. But having said that, of course, there are still many people uh, who would be amazed by the fact that a male could sing in a female range. But at the same time, some would laugh when they heard you or they would try to ridicule you just because they didn't understand. Why are you singing like a, like a girl? Um, it took me a while to accept the fact that this reaction uh, could just be a norm in my musical life. But um, I, I accepted it, but it, it doesn't mean that it, it was easy for me. I remember um, sharing my concerns and emotions with my voice teacher then. Uh, uh, and I still remember vividly her words of encouragement. She said, and I am paraphrasing here, if they laughed at you, it is because they are ignorant and you should not feel bad just because you are good at what you do and you know better than them. So, um, so it is now, and she said, it is now your responsibility to teach them what a counter tenor is. You know, you are a singer. At the same time, you are also an educator to your craft. So it's your, it's your right and you, it's your birthright. That's a big word. Or, or just it's your responsibility to, to, you know, carry on with this art and teach more people about this craft. So that conversation definitely follows me throughout my entire musical life. I, I hold on tight to that and use it as my motivation to improve myself. As I know, I need to put my best foot forward in front of the people who have never heard about counter tenors. And in some way, again, educate them, you know, about this voice type. So uh, it has become a little game that I play with, uh, play with myself while uh, performing. So whenever I am singing, I love to just look, look at the audience. And when I sing my first note, I will be like looking for confused faces or like the abrupt lifting of heads, like looking at the program and they're like, I thought it was a guy, you know? And, and, and that, that is when I know my, my lesson has some kind, kind of, my, learn, my lesson has begun. Quiet, sleep, or I will make the rain is whipped with a snake and screw with a diamond stick. My body to the boiling lake, the fire and brimstone never slake. Thy head shall ache, and every joint of all the quick, and therefore dare not yet to wake. Quiet, sleep, quiet, sleep, quiet. There was this specific story that I would like to share. Share it. It was funny to my to me as well. So I was performing as one of the soloists uh, among a soprano, a tenor, uh, a baritone in a concert in Malaysia. So in the concert, there was a huge screen uh, where the camera would uh, would be projecting live footage of the performance. So during one section of the music, uh, each soloist would take turn to sing their lines. And each time the camera would kind of zoom in on that performer. So like when the soprano sang, the camera was on her. And when, uh, so when 
the tenor and the baritone sang. But when I was singing, the footage was uh, showing the soprano, but obviously her mouth was not moving. And the camera started kind of panning and zooming out. Oh, when they found that it was me that sang, they finally just zoom in on me again. Yeah, I, I didn't know about the, 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 the incident the entire time of the performance. I am glad that I didn't know because I would be laughing my beep off. So just until uh, the end of the concert, someone shared that story with me. And I thought it was, it was the greatest, one of the greatest stories that I ever have in, in my musical, uh, musical uh, performance life. Let's do a couple of rapid fire questions. What's the weirdest gig you've ever had? I would say all the COVID gigs are weird, you know, because you don't get to, you have to learn how to take yourself, send it in, you know, it's kind of fun. Absolutely. And who's your favorite non-classical artist? Dolly Parton. <laughs> uh, I, I, should I say a little bit more about Dolly Parton? I actually didn't know much about her until I, I moved to the States. And, and then I was watching uh, this movie, uh, something Angel, uh, Unlikely Angel. And then I was like, oh, this actress could, can sing, huh? And then I realized that she was actually a singer herself. That's, why, that's how I, I got to learn about her and started to get you know, in love with her music. Yeah. That's great. Great fun. She... She's just phenomenal. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And she has such a great life. And her life stories are the best. I just watched her Christmas concert mm -hmm. uh, from last year, the newest one, when she was sharing her stories. They were so sad, and, but, so, but also so heartwarming that just inspire you, especially as a, as a musician myself. Agree. <laughs> and what kind of music do you do you listen to when you're not making music? Mm, I have a kid in me, so nobody not nobody hates Disney music, and I love them all. Yeah, fun, fun. And and especially now that I don't get to meet people in 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 person in in the real world, having this opportunity to meet new friends like yeah. yourself uh, over a Zoom call, it's fun. And, and fun. Getting the, uh, having the ability to, an opportunity to share my musical life and hopefully use it as, as an example as, or a sample or an inspirational thing that someone out there who has listened to my story and get inspired, you know, it, it will be the ultimate goal of, of, my, of my musical life, I would say. Perfect. Thank you.